Hi, welcome to the 14 day weather forecast. Things have been very mixed recently. Parts of the country have seen lots of rain, although locally here in Berkhamsted it still hasn't been particularly wet. There has been some rain, but amounts have remained quite small through the last week. How is it looking during the next fortnight? Well, I'll begin as usual by taking a look at the view across Europe and the North Atlantic. The animation runs from 18 GMT, Tuesday the 24th, and it's using data from the GFS model. To begin with, there are some heavy showers in eastern Britain. There are some showery conditions further west, but they tend to be lighter and more scattered there. But if we look out into the Atlantic, the next feature is making its way towards the UK, and that brings outbreaks of rain to much of the country through Wednesday, although amounts in the south are likely to be small. Then on Thursday, there's a chance of further spells of rain in central and southern counties, but they look quite patchy. Also wet in the far north. However, in the days which follow, quite a big change takes place. High pressure starts to build northwards. It brings a lot of dry weather. But into the early part of next week, there could well be some showers in eastern and possibly southern Britain as more of a northeasterly flow starts to develop. So what's driving these changes? Well, as ever, the jet stream is a key player. The animation here is also from 18 GMT, Tuesday the 24th. To start with, there's a strong jet stream pushing across the Atlantic towards the UK. And if I run this, you'll see that in the short term, not much changes. However, by the weekend and into the early part of next week, the jet becomes a lot more fragmented. High pressure builds close to the UK. A big change, if that's correct. With the high pressure building, what is the temperature trend likely to be through the first week? Varying, I think, sums it up and probably fluctuating around the average, some cooler and warmer days. 15 GMT, Thursday the 26th of May here. GFS forecast on the left, the Met Office UKV on the right. The warmest conditions generally in the southeast, close to 20 Celsius. Going forwards to look at the minimums on Saturday the 28th, quite a chilly start, which is why I brought these charts up. Widely down into single figures, parts of Wales and the southwest dipping down to three or four Celsius according to the UKV chart. Then moving forwards to uh, Saturday afternoon, temperatures again, warmest really in the south and the east, maybe 20 Celsius on the UKV model. It, it does have cooler conditions there further north. GFS quite similar uh, generally. And then finally on Tuesday the 31st, at this point the, it's beyond the range of UKV, so just for GFS chart, 21 Celsius in the London area. Also, I think it's notable to see the higher values in much of Western Britain and Northern Ireland. Cooler here in the northeast, down to about 14 Celsius. That's because we'll, the GFS is forecasting winds to be coming from the northeast, so the air's crossing the North Sea and it's bringing the cooler uh, temperatures to eastern parts of the UK. It's warming up as you head further west. The MOGREPS uh, temperature data tables are quite interesting and they really highlight that trend. London, uh, towards the end of the period, the light yellows are dominant, so 11 to 15 Celsius. And compare that with Cardiff. The yellows are actually making up slightly smaller amounts of these columns. It's a little bit warmer as you go further west. Normally, you'd expect to see London and the southeast showing the highest values, but on this occasion, that's not the case just towards the end of the period, so through the last few days, so the 29th onwards, really. Rainfall, days 0 to 5, the ECM chart on the left, GFS on the right. 
Some rain really in all parts of the UK, but once more, amounts in much of the south are small single figures. Going forwards to 0 to 10 days, a disparity now between the ECM and the GFS. ECM going for a wetter pitch from the whole, the highest totals in Western Scotland, that's consistent with the GFS on the right, but in much of southern and central Britain, ECM has between 10 and 20 millimetres, GFS still keeping things in single figures. It does, as usual when you see these variations like this, highlights a lower level of confidence in that 5 to 10 day forecast period. Therefore, what do the deterministic models look like when compared to each other at one week ahead? Here's the GFS, which the animation was based on. High pressure, just centered to the northwest, and winds starting to come in from a northeasterly direction. The Canadian model, similar really, high pressure here just to the west. Could be some showers around in the southeast. The German icon, high pressure centered further northwest and low pressure to the east, perhaps having more influence, maybe showery there in eastern Britain. The European ECM, there are some differences here, probably explaining the higher rainfall totals, which it showed when compared to the GFS, low pressure having more influence. Through the summer months, when you look at these charts, they are height charts, not just surface pressure ones. When a green circle appears close to the UK, that more often than not indicates the possibility of it turning very wet, if you're under it. Finally, the UK Met Office also indicating the possibility of showers or maybe longer spells of rain in the north and the east. High pressure having less influence, just being centered further west and north and on the GFS, for example. Taking all of those together, there are some differences. Once again, the broad scale picture is consistent. High pressure to the west, to the north. It's really a question of how far northwest it becomes centered and in turn, what influence areas of low pressure coming in from the east, the northeast, will be having at this point. Driest and warmest uh, con driest and warmest conditions would likely be in the west based on most of these deterministic models. How is week two looking? Well, as ever, I'll use the ensemble data to try and identify the trends and probabilities as they appear at the moment. Starting with the 16-day GEFS plot for London, air mass temperatures are on the top half and although there is quite a big spread with some very warm runs and a few cool ones, on balance, close to average sums things up quite well. Rainfall across the bottom, some spikes continue to appear throughout the second week. They aren't numerous. It doesn't look particularly wet by any means, but there is a risk of at least some rain. Going up to Glasgow, the air mass profile is actually quite similar, close to the 30 year norm according to most of the runs. Rainfall, there are more spikes here than there were on the London chart, indicating a greater chance of rain on any given day. But it does not look particularly wet here either. It's worth taking a look at a chart for Plymouth going further west because although the air mass profile is similar to the other two, it's interestingly drier than the London plot on balance for a few spikes showing through the second week. One or two very big ones though, indicating that if it does rain, it could be really torrential. Possibly those are indicating thundery downpours. On the whole though, it actually looks as though more, more runs in the model are showing dry conditions for this location than they are in the London area. Indicating really that high pressure will probably be centered to the west of the UK. Two meter temperatures, the London data table, 
mostly light orange. Maximums are between 16 and 20 Celsius. A significant amount of a darker orange, both V21 to 25s and a little bit of red V26 to 30s. It suggests that temperatures will be close to or perhaps a little bit above the average throughout that second week when, when averaged as a whole. Some days may be cooler, some warmer, depending on cloud cover, the extent of that east or northeasterly flow. Going up to Glasgow, temperatures here, mostly in the orange as well, 16s to 20s, a greater amount of yellow, 11s to 15s, a little bit cooler, but it looks to be quite a respectable temperature profile for the northwest of UK uh, relative to its location. Now, it's a little bit lower than London, but you would expect it to be the case. And here, these values do look fairly decent for the time of the year. Mean surface level pressure data table is for Brighton today, not York, for reasons I'm going to bring up a second one in a moment. Mostly light yellows, so 1,011 to 1,025 millibars, and notice the amount of oranges which show up 1,026 to 1,040. Often, high pressure is centred to the south of the UK, so as we head north, in this case to Inverness, you would expect there to be less orange appearing in these columns because those are the higher pressure ones. On this occasion, though, there are more than there were on the Brighton chart. It illustrates the reasonably high degree of confidence that the, that the centre of high pressure will be to the west and to the north of the UK rather than to the south. Quite an unusual pattern, it's not the norm. It happens at times, in, in the winter months, it would generally lead to cold or very cold conditions. I think as well, this type of thing has happened in a number of recent Mays, uh, and perhaps into the early part of June, but I'm just speculating there. I don't have the data available off the top of my head, but I've got a feeling that we've seen Scotland often having the best of the weather in May, before things go downhill later on through the summer as a whole, at least in the north of the United Kingdom. The GEFS mean uh, ensemble pressure chart for Friday the 3rd of June backs up this general idea. High pressure centered to the west of the UK to the north. The question is how much influence areas of low pressure to the northeast will be having. The European ECM, a similar story, maybe high pressure actually a little more dominant according to this ensemble model. Finally, going back to the GEFS to look at the 10 to 15 day pressure anomaly. Oranges and browns indicate positive. The strongest in this case positive anomaly is to the west of the northwest, backing up the idea that high pressure will be somewhere somewhere around here. Lower pressure as you go towards Scandinavia, consistent with the general idea that I've been discussing throughout this second week. So to summarize, week one starts changeable with showers or longer spells of rain. It then turns drier as high pressure builds northwards, but there is a chance of showery rain in the east in particular. Temperatures fluctuate around the average, becoming warmer in the west relative to the east towards the end of the week. Week two, probably quite settled on the whole, but there is a risk of rain, especially in the east and the north of the UK. Temperatures close to or above the average, but cooler at times in the north east. So there we have it. High pressure probably having a good deal of influence through the period as a whole. Not ideally situated if it's very warm conditions that you're hoping for. Nonetheless, it should keep rainfall amounts quite low, especially 
after the first two or three days. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this forecast and found it useful. If you did, then please remember to hit the like and subscribe buttons below. Thanks for watching now. Bye.